I'm not big for you. Mm -hmm. I'm big for me. Wow, like, um, because I really thought I was on my way. Only you can stop you. Go for it. Hi, I'm Carrie Murphy, and welcome to Inspired Living TV. You know, in America, we are so fortunate to have the freedom that we do. The freedom of speech, the freedom of religion, the freedom to start a business whenever we feel like it. And yet, how often do we really think about the men and women that are out there protecting that freedom? Well, in this new interview, I am going to be introducing you to someone who not only has given a lot for that freedom, but is now inspiring lives throughout the world. Today, I am so excited to introduce you to retired Staff Sergeant Joey Jones, who has an incredible story and message. Joey, thank you so much for taking time out. I know you're a very busy man right now, so thank you for spending a little time with me today. Well, yeah, you know, it's a great year for boot campaign, and uh, because it's a great year for that, it's a good year for me, and uh, we're busy doing all kinds of things, but so honored that you would come and hang out with us today, and um, allow me to share a little bit of our story. Yeah, so, so you actually entered the Marine Corps right after high school. Yeah, you know, I graduated high school when I was 17, a little bit early, and I spent that first year after high school trying to decide if college was a thing for me or if a job was. And sure. uh, you know, a young 17, 18 year old is looking at a new vehicle or trying to get out of mom and dad's house and all those things that really don't matter. So, but they uh, do at the time though, yeah, those are big yeah. decisions. <laughs> they, uh, wow, you know, it was like, I gotta get out of this house and those things. And so finally I had a friend say, hey man, we should join the Marine Corps. And I thought, there's no way, I would never make it. And then one day I woke mm. up and realized, hey, because I think I would never make it, that's a good, that's a good reason to go try it out. So I joined the Marine Corps and a few weeks later I was on my way to boot camp. And the funny thing is he actually didn't go to the Marine Corps, so he talked me into it. And, and then did it end up going with you. <laughs> yeah, you know, he found his way out of it. I love that you said that though, Joey, because I think so many people, regardless of where you're at in your life, there's so many things that scare us that think, oh my gosh, I couldn't do that, I couldn't make that, I can't yeah. start a business or go into the Marine Corps or anything, you know. And you said, you know, because of that, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it anyway. Yeah, you know, I mean, what makes people tick, who knows, but uh, there are some things about people that are pretty similar and unique and just amazing. You know, human beings are amazing, mm -hmm. and one of them is fear. You know, fear is a powerful tool. Mm -hmm. The fact I was afraid to go to boot camp uh, mean, meant that when I did go, my uh, senses were acute and heightened, and, you know, that little bit of fear there kept me on point and made me incredibly successful as a Marine. Yeah. Um, every time I thought I couldn't do something, but I had to do it anyway, um, I felt like I got a little bit better at it and uh, just, you know, life isn't easy, so you got to tackle it with some positivity. For sure. That's such a great message. I absolutely love that and I think so many people can relate to that, Joey. Um, so you were in the Marine Corps for, for eight years. Mm -hmm. And tell me what happened on August 6, 2010. Yeah, so uh, to set the stage, after joining the Marine Corps, after the first three years in service, 2007, I went on deployment to Iraq. and. Uh, I was security for EOD, Explosive Ordnance Disposal, which is uh, the bomb squad for the military. Every service calls it that. And so our main job in Iraq and Afghanistan was to take apart the roadside bombs, the IEDs. Well, uh, in 2007, I went there, I was security for those guys, got to see what they did, and I'm like, wow, these guys are so incredible, they're smart, and they have hmm. cool toys, and they're really <laughs> brave, and they save the day for everyone. So I came back and went to school for that. And in 2010, I deployed to Afghanistan as a bomb tech and EOD tech. Hmm. Um, we were there for, well, from May through August, um, rendering safe about 70 IEDs in that deployment. Um, it was unfortunate that year, 2009, 10, 11, 12, were some of the deadliest years for our job sure. field across the board. Yeah. And uh, so we started losing brothers and, and the cards started getting shuffled. And finally, I found myself in a place called Safar Bazaar. And, um, on August 6, 2010, we had been there for five days trying to take all the bad things and bad people out of this town. And um, after 38 IEDs in five days, I stepped on an IED the sixth morning. And, um, you know, the, the common misconception is that it knocks you out, but if you don't get hit in the head with something, it doesn't. Right. So I was awake the whole time. And, oh. um, but, uh, you know, in hindsight, I'm glad I was because. Uh, that's an experience that I think through in a positive way all the time and look at how I reacted and uh, learn from it and, and remember something new almost every day and I, you know when I made it back home I had that to look back to and be thankful because 
had it knocked me out right away, I may have never realized just how close I was to passing away or just how precious those moments were and, yeah. and how amazing it was those Marines did what they did to keep me alive. Really amazing story. So through that, Joey, obviously, you know, you lost your legs and you had some other injuries. But, mm -hmm. you know, I think for so many people, you know, we can't maybe understand that traumatic of an experience, but yet we all go through traumas in our life. And you're sitting here and you're so handsome and well put together and huh. so positive. But let's just be real here. There were times, I'm sure, that you were like, what the heck? Like, or that this yeah. was yeah, really of hard. Um, so one thing, you know, people that serve or have been injured in any at all in past generations or even these wars, they'll come up to me and they'll shake my hand and they'll thank me for my service and I'll thank them back right away. Genuinely thank them back and they'll go, oh, well, you know, I didn't do anything you did. And I think what I try to explain to people is the exceptional thing about serving is when you raise your right hand and volunteer. Mm -hmm. Most everything after that is circumstantial. In other words, you know, the injury or the experience is relative. Um, the worst thing that's happened to me is equal to the worst thing that's happened to you because that's what we have to judge against or, or that's the experiences we have. So for me, um, when I lost my legs, uh, just like someone that's suffering from cancer or other things that can be perceived as tragic and go out and run marathons and things, um, I knew I had to get, get past it, recover as best I could because I had a little boy I had to take care of. I had a family that well, I was still responsible for. Mm -hmm. So every day for five minutes a day, I would kick everyone out of my room. I would scream and throw stuff <laughs> and just cuss God, the devil, and everything in between. Um, and then at the end of that five minutes, my alarm would go off. I'd collect myself back together and I'd carry on my day. And, and in an annoyingly positive <laughs> manner. <laughs> but, um, you know what got me through it? That's what got me through it. And I'm sure other people have other ways. And You know what, Joey, I love about that is that you allowed yourself to feel whatever was truly authentic and whatever was coming up. Like that five minutes, I think, for, for, like you said, and I love that you said too, like your trauma isn't different than someone else's trauma. It's just we all deal with it or oh, we yeah. don't or mm -hmm. we don't deal with it. So the fact that you were like everyone out for five minutes, mm -hmm. I'm going to cuss and scream yeah. and shout and then I'm going to move on. But I think, did that allow you to actually like heal from that experience a little bit or, or give you that, that outlet to be no positive? Yeah, you know, um, like you said, you, you're, you know, life is a series of choices. Things happen, maybe you control them, maybe you don't. Mm -hmm. But you always have to decide how you're gonna respond to them. And you know, for us, especially most people, and especially those that are stubborn, um, <laughs> you may choose not to deal with something because you don't feel like you can let it affect you. And when you do, uh, it just comes back, you know? It's just like a wave, it goes out and it comes back in. If you choose not to deal with something that heavy, that big of a deal, it's gonna come back to bite you through personal relationships or your own uh, positive mental attitude. And so when I had that son, you know, that was the big defining factor was I had a child that needed a smart, or at least smart as I could be, <laughs> on point, ready to take on the world dad. Yeah. And so the choice to deal with it and get over it was a choice that you know was greatly perpetuated by him, more so than my own selfishness or own need to be over it. Um, so I guess you can say you kind of saved my life in that respect. Yeah. You know, Joey, you talk about the power of service, and part of what I do through Inspired Living and my team does is, you know, everything that we do is about serving others and really helping them use their gifts to the best and highest use possible. I was not aware that there is over 1.3 million active military, like active military mm -hmm. personnel right now. And do you feel like um, like we honor them, like that we really appreciate the work that they do because it is volunteer, it is mm -hmm. all service. And I think from at least I'll speak on my own, it's easy to forget that there's you know over a million people out there every day that are fighting for us. Well, you know, it's, it's a twofold uh, concept. So on one hand, there's a lot of people serving. On the other hand, there are there's a tremendous amount more people who aren't. You know, 300 million Americans. Yeah. Only 1.4 million are serving at any given time. Um, but as far as like being appreciative or saying thank you or doing enough to say thank you, I think I speak for that 1.4 million when I say we just want you to appreciate what we have. Mm -hmm. And we joined a service to defend this great country, not because of the amount of money we have or the strength of our military but because of the type of people we are yeah. and the type of life that we want to create for each other. And somewhere along the way, a lot of people have died and fought to keep it that way. 
um, we want you to appreciate it. And so when you're driving down the road and traffic sucks, rather than <laughs> cussing and making it worse and ruining someone else's day, maybe it's a gift to sit there and go, man, this traffic's the worst thing about my life right now. Oh, amen. Um, that's... So that's the kind of America I want you all to have. And that's why we served in the military. So talking about like really spreading the awareness, tell me about the boot campaign. Well, the boot campaign is a really simple but incredibly effective idea. Five ladies in Texas uh, with no direct affiliation to the military, no family member, um, no direct family member, husband, or themselves in the military, read the book Lone Survivor uh, by Marcus Luttrell. And it's his account of losing his three teammates and being held captive by the Taliban and finally coming back home. Uh, there was a Mark Wahlberg movie about it um, mm -hmm. that most people know, and the story is just incredible. Well, these five ladies in Texas read the book and went, wow, you know, we appreciate this, but we're not doing near enough. We haven't shown true appreciation. So they came together. Uh, they got Joe Nichols, um, Casey Musgraves, and some radio DJs, Big D and Bubba, to put on combat boots and do a photo shoot to show their thanks and to show that to Marcus. Well, that caught fire. Hmm. Uh, Governor Perry was the next, and then from there, a whole ton of celebrities. Now we're up to almost a thousand celebrities. Wow! Uh, from the top of the top to you know your everyday celebrity that's local, mm -hmm. and uh, they don a pair of combat boots. They do a boot shoot, uh, a photo shoot. We market that in social media, traditional media, campaigns and events, all to get their fans and their friends to say, "Wow, you know, let me try this out." So the idea is that people who may not have any connection to the military will see someone they look up to, a singer, an actor, wearing combat boots, supporting the military, and think, hmm, let me try that out. Let, let me see what that's about. Mm -hmm. And then maybe their organic appreciation will grow. So the boot campaign is a military nonprofit. Our niche is to get civilians and celebrities in combat boots to show their support for the military. We do that by selling combat boots. Which uh, we can see here. Yeah. And they are. They're, like, they're really cute boots. Well, they're made by the same companies, and they are the combat boots. Of course, I say cute boots, but they're actually like, <laughs> cute, right? effective, <laughs> functional. You know, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know what? Yeah, they're, you can call them cute. That's okay. They are cute. You know? um, I guess in uniform, they're rugged. Though, yeah, sure. Um, but no, you know, we, we get people to wear these combat boots uh, to buy them. Any money we make over our cost comes into our general fund for 100% uh, charitable organizations. So our general fund is used to fund our programs, which are urgent financial assistance, housing, um, you know, education, career transition, family support, gold star family support. Um, all those programs are specifically designed to do what government programs or other influential nonprofits just are overlooking or don't have time to do. Uh, so we call it fill in the gap. And it's all a, a hand up, none yeah. of it's a handout. And you know, you have these military and veteran families that have just gone through, you know, can I say? So much. Yeah, you yeah. know. And so if this is that one little thing stopping them from that next great thing in life, then we want to be the ones that help them out through that. So if people watching, I mean, first of all, not only am I getting a pair, but I want to do a boot shoot. Yeah. Yeah, for Inspired Living. It'd be great. Absolutely. Yeah. We'd be honored. Um, how do people find out more and get their own pair? Because I'm thinking with the dress, it'd be really sexy, but they go yeah. with anything. They're neutral. Well, and that's the thing is if you <laughs> wear a business suit every day or a dress every day, combat boots aren't your first choice. Mm -hmm. And that's the point. If you wear combat boots on Friday, people are going to ask you why you're wearing combat boots. And right. then you get the gift of telling them. I support the military, and this is why. Uh, so if you want to get your boots on, go to bootcampaign.com. You can check us out on Facebook at Boot Campaign, and Twitter and Instagram and other socials at Boot Campaign. All right, wonderful. And, Joey, before we wrap up, I want to know, what does inspired living mean to you? Well, you know, it's living with a purpose. Mm -hmm. And that's what I try to do. Uh, that's what I try to teach my son to do. And I think if you put a purpose behind what you do, you'll get a better quality of life out of it and... Most importantly, you're going to influence the people around you and be a shining light rather than, uh, you know, a cloudy day. Mm. And you are certainly that, really. Thank you so yes, much. Thank you. And thank you for watching this Inspired Living interview. If you want more inspiration, and I know you do, head over to inspiredliving.tv. And more importantly, we would love to hear from you. You know, what did you take away from this interview? And what little thing can you do? Show your gratitude to those that are serving or just for your life right now. Please post your comments because when you are inspired, 
you inspire others. And as always, remember to keep dreaming it, living it, and being it. Until next time.